Hey guys, I'm going to walk you through how to create your cardboard cutout or your cardboard net for your shipping waste project. Uh, so there is this kind of vector cutting guide that we have in Google Classroom that has kind of the basic steps. So I'm going to basically go through that and kind of demonstrate how you would create this. Um, so you will need the STEM laptop for this. Um, so when you grab a STEM laptop, the username is STEM, the password is laptop, um, and then that should get you in. You are going to need to use Corel Draw. So it's not going to be in the middle of your screen. I just moved that mine so it was easy to find, but it's the one with kind of the green pencil. So let's go ahead and open Corel Draw. Of course, it would have to load, but I wanted to show you. Um, so you are going to get this kind of screen here. And you can just skip through this. Um, we have a school account, so you don't need to log in with anyone at all. Um, and then once it gets going, um, it's typically going to have some sort of welcome screen and how to get started. Uh, we are just going to select the new document here on the left side of our screen. And then when we do that, it's going to usually default in as a 9 by 12, which is what we can usually see in that first bar when we haven't clicked on anything yet. Um, so you will also need to complete this. You're going to need your sheet where we picked which shape you're doing and then the three different arrangements and you should have picked one of them. So I just kind of have one here as an example. I'm going to type it on the screen so that you guys can see kind of what I'm creating mine for. Um, so I know that, so oops, that's really small. Let's see if we can make that font a quite a bit bigger. Okay, so I'm creating a box that has a length of four inches, a width of 2.5 inches, and then a height that is 2.25 or two and one fourth inches. Okay, so that's the kind of box that I'm creating and you'll see why that's helpful. You don't have to type your measurements on the screen, you have them on your paper, um, but for my kind of tutorial here. Um, so the first thing that our directions tell us to do is that we're going to use the rectangle tool to draw and size six rectangles to create a net of our box. So the rectangle tool is this one right here. Uh, anytime it has kind of that black corner, that's always kind of an extension. So there's other options in there, but we just want the basic rectangle. Uh, so how I'm going to go ahead and get started for this is I'm just going to kind of draw a rectangle. Um, you can see kind of some of those boxes are kind of changing numbers as I type um, so that the second set of boxes, the one right now that says 4.052 and 2.782, um, you can kind of keep an eye on those and you can make them exactly how they are. I don't like to drag and drop it that way. So I'm just going to drag and drop a random rectangle. And then I'm actually going to go up here and resize it. So I know I want mine to be four inches wide. And let's say, um, trying to picture this, let's do uh, two and a half inches tall. And the reason I picked those numbers from my length and my width here is because based on, I drew a little 3D model of mine right uh, and pinpoint it right here. Um, so this is going to be kind of like the bottom of my box. Um, so I'm going to start with that, and it's exactly the size I want. And then for my next rectangle, I'm just going to kind of click and build it off of the one I already had. So that will automatically make it 4 inches. And then I want my next one to be um, 2.25 inches. So again, you can kind of draw randomly and then go up and actually type in exactly what measurement you want. Uh, one thing I noticed when I went and typed that, I now have kind of two a space here. I want those to line up perfectly. So I'm going to just kind of select it and use my arrow key to arrow that up. Um, so that kind of creates those boxes there. So this is four inches wide, two and a half tall. This one's four inches wide and 2.25 inches tall. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just kind of keep creating my net. Um, so we did practice this kind of together and how um, those different size boxes will kind of alter. So... Um, this one's four, four by, if I want to select, I have to use this arrow. Four by 2.25, four point by 2.5, 2, five, that one was two five. And four by 2.25, so I know I need another um, four by 2.5. So I'm actually going to just copy and paste. It's kind of the easiest way to do it and then drag it down. Again, making sure that all those lines line up. So basically, this is my bottom. This would be my back. Um, this one will be my 
front and then this would be the top. Okay, so that's kind of how it, if you picture rolling it. Um, so I just now need to do those two boxes kind of off to the side. These ones would be two and a half by 2.25. So I'm gonna just draw it randomly. I want it to be 2.25 wide. And I know it needs to be 2.25 wide because if this line up here is 2.25, then this line right here needs to be 2.25. So I'm just gonna copy and paste those and just trying to get it to match up. So the 2.5 kind of matches here. So we have our six boxes, um, they're all there. Uh, we don't need to group them or anything. We just have them make sure that all of the lines actually line up and there's not like any gaps between those rectangles. So that's the first step. Create those six rectangles, make sure the exact sizes that you need. Um, as you need to type them in, you can use that right up here anytime you're select on a box, okay? The next step is you're gonna outline. So we're gonna use our two point line tool, which is actually this one. So it starts off, it's a plus and a little squiggly. Um, so freehand, we don't want a freehand. We wanna get nice straight lines. So I'm gonna click that little black corner and then I'm gonna use this two point line. So it's the second one down. So just a reminder, yours will probably start out the same way with the plus and the squiggly for the freehand. Click that and then just click two point line. And then we are actually just going to go, we're going to outline. So the outside of our box, we're going to outline it twice. So I'm going to start here in the top left corner and I'm going to, you'll see how it kind of highlights the node there. That's a good thing. I'm going to click and just drag, let go. And then I'm going to click and drag. Okay. I'm making sure my lines are straight. Okay. And just all click and drag. And then anytime it says node, that means I'm at kind of a corner already. And then I'm not going across any of those inside lines, just clicking and dragging um, to, oops. And so you can see there, I went from here to here. I actually could have kept going. I could have made that all one line, um, but that's totally okay. So going around, up, back over. So that was going around once. Um, so I'm actually gonna go around one more time. So click and drag all the way around, um, making sure those lines all line up. Okay, this one you can watch. Um, I'm gonna click and drag all the way down the bottom. I don't have to stop at the edge of each box um, anytime there's a straight way. Okay, now the reason we're going, we're outlining it twice is because when we print this, we want the inside lines to cut so that we can fold it but we want the outsides to kind of break free from the rest of the cardboard. So by having uh, more than one line on top of each other, it actually is going to make it cut it more than once, which is actually going to help it cut all the way through. So now that I have that, um, so I have the six boxes and then I did my outline. Okay, so just double checking our directions here. Um, we're gonna use that black pointer tool. We're gonna draw a box around all the shapes and then we're gonna make our lines hair lines. Um, so how we do that is I'm on my black pointer, and so I'm just going to click and drag to kind of create a box that will select everything. I have this object properties menu over here on the right. If you don't see object properties for a menu option, just go to object here and then just make sure there's a check mark next to that down here at the bottom. So if you don't see it, um, so it wouldn't be there, you can just click object and then just object properties and then it shows up. So because I clicked and dragged the box around everything, it selected all kind of my layers of my outline and my boxes. It usually de defaults to a 0.5 point. We're gonna change that to hairline because that's how you actually get it to vector or to kind of cut into the cardboard instead of just kind of like tracing it onto it. So now everything's a hairline, which is exactly what do we want it. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna save the project. You wanna make sure you put your first name the first letter of your last name or the kind of your last name initial, and then you're going to add that shipping box afterwards. This will help us when we're printing at the epilogue pr printer um, so that we actually know whose is printing next. Okay. And then we're going to go through the print settings and that's all down right here. Um, just make sure you really kind of go piece by piece to figure this one out. So I'm going to delete this text off my page. so I don't have it anymore. I'm going to do file print. Um, it usually, it, depending on what the STEM laptops default to, um, mine always defaults to a different printer. So we want to make sure we choose the Epilogue Engraver Win X64. I'm going to select that. And then we're going to go to preferences. Here in preferences, the first thing is we want to select autofocus. So that box 
should be checked. You can kind of leave the other ones the way they are. We are going to select vector. Um, so we're not rastering. We are only vectoring or cutting for this one. Um, for the horizontal and vertical, uh, usually you can, I think most of our projects will fit within those parameters. If we need to change that, so let's say, let's, I'm going to back out just for a second. So when I come and kind of select this object, it's telling me that it's eight and a half by basically nine and a half tall. Um, so when we print having an eight and a half by 11, that's a little tight. Um, so we might need our cardboard a little bit bigger. Um, so I maybe might resize my cardboard so it's like nine inches by 10 inches, which would give us a little bit of leeway. So let's go back to that file print and we can make that change now. Again, it changed. So I'm going to go back to Epilogue Engraver. I'm going to click on Preferences right here. We're going to change this horizontal to nine inches. And then we can just leave that vertical at 11 um, or we could even go to 10 because that's what time size we said. This means that you need to have a cardboard piece that is nine by 10 inches. Okay, make sure you have that. And I skip, we had to do the auto fo focus check, the vector. Um, we're gonna have cardboard that's nine by 10. Here we're in our vec vector settings. The raster one's grayed out because we chose to vector only. I would like everyone to use a speed of 50 and a power of 90. So I'm gonna type that in here. So a speed of 50, a power of 90, and then we need to do a frequency of 500, okay? So you can kind of use a combination of sliding that bar and then these pluses and minuses to get the right number, okay? So just review, autofocus vector, nine by 10 is what I need for my box. You might need bigger, you might need smaller. Um, again, you can, whenever you're selected on your object, um, it'll kind of tell you what the dimensions are. 50 speed, 90 power, 500 for frequency. We're gonna click okay. We need to make sure we choose to apply those settings first, and then we're going to go ahead and click print, okay? Um, so I didn't go through the save here, um, which I should have, uh, but hopefully you know what I mean by first name, last initial, and shipping. Okay, now that is actually sent over to the printer. Uh, if you go over there, you should be able to look at the job list and you should find your first name, last initial, and then the shipping waste project that we named it. Um, so this will hopefully cut it out the correct way. I'm going to show you an example. Okay, so this is one that kind of cut out. Um, so basically what happened is it cut perfectly along the edges here or near perfectly. My cardboard wasn't quite the perfect size. Um, but what it's done is it cut through this layer here, but it didn't cut on the back side because now I can actually fold this into a box. Okay. And it actually kind of all stays together. So that's why we created it the way we did um, so that it'll cut along these lines here, but doesn't cut it all the way through so that it can actually stay together and make that box. And we could tape or glue this together now as our example, but we at least have our net for it. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know. I'll kind of show kind of how to manage the cardboard over at the engraver when you're at that point. Thanks guys.